for me. Good evening, everyone. I call the meeting to order at 701. Let the, re uh, let the record reflect that all board members are present. Can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? I move that we hold a public hearing for the proposed 2023-2024 expenditure budget. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Miglarino. Uh, President Paperman, members of the board, Dr. Finch. Um, this evening we have the expenditure budget to share with you for um, fiscal year 24. Um, I'm going to go through these slides, although we've gone through them before, uh, just in the interest of this is a public hearing. Uh, we do a conclusion of this need to allow for any input from the public. Um, and then at the regular meeting that will be immediately following, uh, we will ask the board to take formal action. So I'll go through it quickly because we've seen this, um, or maybe not. Uh, for some reason, this will not advance. So this is the first slide. Give me one moment. There it is. That's all you had to do is get up. Sheila. Sheila, there's no microphone for people to talk or unless you're going to sit and talk. Okay. Of course you did. I'm sorry. My apologies. Uh, so uh, again, the budget process uh, starts many months ago uh, with a lot of input, as you can see here. Um, and it will conclude this evening with the board's decision about uh, um, adopting the budget. Uh, we did have a budget committee, as we've had for several years. Um, these are the uh, guidelines or the um, recommendations that they uh, developed uh, with, uh, once again, a competitive salary and benefit package being uh, the number one priority. These are in um, priority order from that committee uh, that which which uh, took place back starting in December and concluding, I believe, in February. <clears throat> uh, we do have the goal book uh, or budget book, if you will, that we have also provided for the board. Uh, here are some of the highlights of that. Uh, we do continue to enjoy the MO override at 15%. Uh, that is voter approved. Uh, the inflationary increase uh, total 2.92%. That's 2% for inflation. The 0.92 is a reallocation of results-based funding, um, which we were qualifying for now being added into the base support level. <clears throat> uh, we are projecting um, no increase over the 100th day um, that we enjoyed this year. Again, we had some late uh, student growth in the uh, fiscal year 23, the year that just ended what, 11 days ago, um, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to uh, conservative, conservatively uh, project that to be flat for next year, although our demographer does have a modest increase in their projection. Uh, our teacher experience index did decrease, <clears throat> and the carry forward is set at just under $14 million. <clears throat> uh, staffing did not change. Um, we are continuing to infuse some cash accounts into the budget. Uh, so that's why we have a working budget, uh, which is part of the goal book, as well as the state form. So you'll see a difference in those two amounts just uh, due to uh, the working budget, including additional monies that we continue to use on an annual basis. Here are just the proposed changes. Um, the Group A and Group B weights, uh, you can see uh, what the increases were. Uh, we do have a slight decrease in the carry forward amount. Uh, tuition revenue going away. Um, we have uh, tuition students from uh, um, Cannon Elementary School District in Yavapai County uh, for many years. Uh, they are currently attending Boulder Creek High School. Um, there was a change in the statute, so those students will now be in our ADM count, so we will not re be receiving tuition for them <coughs> from Cannon um, any longer. Uh, again, the teacher experience index uh, did also decrease as previously mentioned. <coughs> So here are the gory details of what that looks like uh, quantified in numbers. 
Uh, we are projecting a budget balance remaining of just over $4 million. Uh, that's helped to, that is designed to help mitigate the um, reduction or elimination of the stimulus funding that is still included in FY24, uh, our FY24 plans, um, and our carry forward is projected to decrease at the conclusion of FY24. So that $4 million is currently designated to be able to be used for um, balancing FY25's budget uh, since we will no longer have the ESSER funds available to us, or the uh, federal stimulus dollars. Uh, staffing salary increases uh, were are significant, again, uh, due to the aggregate expenditure limit that all has been uh, included in what the board has previously approved. I had a slight increase in FTE on the certified side, a slight decrease on the classified staffing side, all driven by the formulas that were on a previous slide. <clears throat> we do have some minor district reclassifications. That's existing employees being reclassified into a different level of uh, or pay range, and then five additional uh, funded positions uh, that have been previously uh, shared with the with the board. Um, I, I won't read all of these. Uh, these are some of the non-staffing changes. Um, one of the highlights here, if you will, will maybe if you want to consider it a highlight, we are having to include a utility increase not only for. Um, the additional square footage that we uh, have uh, places like Inspiration Mountain that we're adding on to, but also the classrooms that we had to uh, add at Union Park and Sonoran Foothills <coughs> that we opened up this year, and uh, also some rate increases both on the electricity side and on the water um, uh, side. Um, and then we get into uh, some uh, details on the tax rate. Um, and I'll just go through, I think it's easier to explain that the primary tax rate is decreasing by just over 3%, so projected to go to $3.40. The secondary tax rate increasing by just under 2% uh, to $2.35. And so uh, that debt impact is shown <clears throat> on this slide here, uh, where the average assessed valuation parcel uh, will see an increase from uh, uh, currently paying $1,027 to $1,079. Uh, and that is largely due to the increase in the assessed valuation. So you can see the average assessed valuation home. This is, um, you know, assuming the same parcel, uh, $246,000 uh, goes up to um, just right at $260,000. That increase in assessed valuation is driving that increase in the total tax being paid. It is worth noting that uh, this year, as part of the next steps, we uh, are not including any adjacent ways funding in the budget, so there is no truth in taxation notice as part of uh, the budget process this year, which has been in previous years. Uh, adjacent ways funding is the funding that allows us to be able to uh, improve uh, parts of our parcel that are, uh, as the name uh, indicates, adjacent to, uh, so roadway improvements, um, utility improvements, things of that nature, and we don't have any of those projects scheduled for next fiscal year. Uh, so that concludes the presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but the board does need to open this up for any public uh, comments as well before we uh, move into the regular meeting. Uh, so the, any public comments? No. Okay, so, oh, she has one. Okay. Could you please uh, can you please go to the microphone and state your name? I'm glad. Just had a question as to the election costs in the budget. How does that pertain to education? Uh, President Paperman, uh, members of the board, the uh, election costs that uh, is incorporated in the budget are for the two elections that are being for this November. One is the renewal of the existing MO override, which has to be continually decided by the voters if that's to remain in, in effect. And the uh, second question that we'll be asking is the uh, $325 million bond initiative that the board previously approved. Um, the district is responsible to and bears the cost of the election when an election is held. 
This will be an all-mail-in election, meaning that it will only be handled through um, mailed-in uh, ballots. And uh, that amount of the election is determined by the Maricopa County Elections Department. Uh, so we do have an increase in our election costs for FY24. That is part of the, um, the, the budget that we're presenting to you this evening. Um, and we do try and combine those elections to happen at the same time to help mitigate the cost of, of the, uh, the elections. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mignorino, if you could, uh, just for the sake of the community's knowledge, the $325 million bond that the board approved in reference to the uh, average tax burden that the, uh, that the community bears, could you go into a little bit how we're going to be able to have that bond to do what it is we need to do for the district while reducing the effective percentage rate on their property value? Not value, but the taxes they pay on the value. Uh, certainly, President Paperman, members of the. I want to make sure we're not uh, getting too far off uh, task here with the public um, hearing for uh, the FY24 budget. But uh, we have set what we consider a level levy for that $325 million bond. Um, we've set it, a, a, that levy is the amount of money that we would collect from taxes, and we've set it at about $47 million. And uh, what that means is that we, throughout the duration of the repayment of the $325 million, we can keep the levy at $4 million annually, uh, which means that there's actually a declining tax rate um, that would be applied uh, to help level the property tax that homeowners will pay. Um, and basically, it's a, a creative way of being able to accelerate the debt that we had on the outstanding um, bonds that were previously sold to be able to layer in the new sales of, of the bonds that would be decided in November uh, so that there wouldn't be an additional financial burden for the property owners in the district. I have uh, a question or just a clarification, Jim. The tuition that the students or the Cannon School District paid, um, what is the difference between that if you can and the, what we'd be getting for the average daily membership that they're turning into now. Yeah, President Paperman, Ms. Ordway, it, it will probably be about a wash, but it's, um, there is a, uh, it is current year funded, um, and there was some debt service payment that we could include in the tuition uh, charges for Canon uh, that we will no longer be able to. Uh, there is some additional clarification that the county and State Board of Edu or the Department of Education, pardon me, um, are still trying to uh, work out because one of the nuances that's unique, I think, maybe to just us, is that there's a new countywide tax that Yavapai County can mm -hmm. uh, can impose with the change in the statute, uh, but we are not in Yavapai County, as you are well aware. Um, so I'm not sure how that is going to get resolved. Uh, but that, that's going to be a minor component to the, the scope for our budget. So essentially, to answer your question, it will likely be a wash and will remain uh, as the arrangement has been for decades, okay. where instead of us getting tuition, we're just going to add them into our ADM. So we just have to report it differently to the state. Okay, I just was checking because I figured it would probably be pretty close. Thank you. So I have a question. I just want to confirm uh, the remaining balance of 4194 You stated that... Uh, this is going to be used for the FY25 if this is for salaries and benefits? Uh, President Paperman, um, yeah, I don't know that we are specifically saying for salaries and benefits, but we're using it to help mitigate the the funding cliff, as some people refer to, uh, with the federal stimulus dollars going away and the anticipation of a reduced carry forward um, so I don't know that we would commit it to salaries and benefits, but we would commit it to the entire FY25 budget and then make those decisions through the process when we uh, develop that budget um, six months from now. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn the public hearing. Uh, All those in favor? 7.15? Yeah, I uh, second. 7.15 is fine. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
same thing. We're break right now. Four minutes. Okay, we're going to move to the next uh, meeting, governing board meeting. I call the meeting at 7.16. Let the record reflect all board members are present. If you are able to stand, please do so and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. You may be seated. Can I have a motion to adapt the agenda? So moved. I have a motion. Can second. I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're moving on to action item number two. Approve the recommendation for the principal of Gallup Gibb Peak School. Mrs. Fisher, can I get a motion? I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation for the principal of Gavilan Peak, Kimberly Elms. Second. Mrs. Muffin, right? I'll take it, Ms. Okay. Uh, Paperman. So President Paperman, members of the board, Dr. Finch, I am very pleased to bring forward Mrs. Uh, Kimberly Elms to you tonight as I recommend it for the principal position at Gavilan Peak. Kim is a, she's a gem. She has quite a extensive uh, resume. She has experience both here in the United States and abroad, uh, most recently in the United Kingdom. She has a great deal of experience with curriculum and instruction, including language programming, which is an important feature, of course, at uh, Gavilan Peak. And as a side note, her kids went to Deer Valley Schools uh, a few years ago. And we know that she'll do a great job. She was the clear uh, favorite candidate, I will say, in the stakeholder committee. And we know she'll do a great job. Thank you. And a welcome to Deer Valley. Oh, uh, all, all those in favor? Aye. We're excited that you're part of our community. Now you can jump up and clap, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't this time for her 10 minute speech? 10 minutes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I'm gonna disappoint you because I have about 10 seconds, but I'm really looking forward to this opportunity. Thank you um, so much for welcoming me into the Deer Valley family, and um, I can't wait to get started with my Firebirds. Okay, we don't have uh, public comments today, so we're going to move to item four, old business. We're going to go to item A. Uh, do I have a motion to approve uh, item A? I move that the governing board approve the 912 CTE curriculum resource materials adoption as recommended. Second. Any presentations on this? Dr. President Paperman, uh, nothing has changed since the last board meeting's presentation. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hmm. Okay. Moving to the next item, do I have a motion to approve item B? I move the governing board accept administration's recommendation to approve the use of the FY24 insurance proceeds. Second. 
Any presentation, Mr. Meglarino? Uh, President Paperman, members of the board, this is a routine item um, that uh, we share with you each year. Uh, there is a statute that uh, calls for us to have this be approved by the board. Um, it is an estimate of what the projected revenue would be if we were to have any insurance claims that would be paid to us. And this is called out separately so that it would not uh, be charged against our budget. We can deposit those um, uh, those claim checks into a separate fund and not be charged against our budget controlled account. So uh, it is a routine item um, and we appreciate your consideration of it this evening. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to item, oh, how many? Okay. I guess, yeah. okay. So we're moving on to item C, adopt, oh, I can I have a motion for item C? I move that the governing board accept administration's recommendation to adopt the 2023-2024 expenditure budget. Second. Mr. Meglarino. Uh, President Paperman, members of the board, Dr. Finch, this is the budget that we just reviewed in the public hearing, um, and this is the formal consideration of uh, what we shared. Uh, so unless there's any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Any questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those that oppose? Okay. Aye. Moving to item D, do I have a motion for item D? I move that the governing board approve oh, the oh, maybe I wrote it. board pro statement for the November 7th, 2023 MO override election. Second. Mr. Biglarina. Uh, President Paperman, members of the board, Dr. Finch, uh, this is the pro statement that we shared with uh, you um, at the last meeting as a preview item. Uh, we did make, uh, the, we did get one uh, suggestion for a change. I think we changed in the third, our second paragraph, pardon me, uh, we changed uh, the last sentence. Uh, it now reads, with this funding, full day kindergarten will continue at cost. Um, where it previously read, um, full day kindergarten will continue with this funding. Um, so uh, just a very slight change. Um, and this is uh, required that we submit this to uh, the uh, County Board of Elections prior to the August 11th date. So uh, appreciate the consideration of this by the board this evening since we don't have another board meeting until the 1st of August. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. aye. Those that oppose? Um, I just want to explain my vote. Uh, I don't believe the board should be forced to, to put a pro statement because it implies that we 100% back what's happening. Um, I mean, we need, there's a lot of factors to it. So uh, I am gonna vote no, um, understanding that it will pass as the board, um, but uh, without voters being respected, I can't put out a pro statement um, against the voters. Moving to action item E, uh, do I have a motion to approve item E? I move that the governing board approve the recommended changes to board policy IGA curriculum development. Second. Dr. Galligan. Oh. Dr. Galligan, do you have a, she has a presentation, okay. President Paperman, member of the board, Dr. Finch. Um, this is coming back to you with just a slight adaptation. So policy IGA is exactly the same except for the removal of um, the word um, governing board. And that came to us from both legal review on June 26th and just today. ASBA sent us uh, a change also in the language. Um, because open meeting law is set by statute, um, it becomes confusing to have it um, listed as coming from uh, the school board and the superintendent recommendation um, because it is statute required. So that is the only change. Everything else remains the same. That's true for policy IGA, policy IGD, and policy IJJ. 
So you'll notice at the bottom of each of these, it just says administration recommends to accept DVUSD language change rather than ASBA language change. That's it, thank you. Okay. Any questions? All those that in favor say aye, all those that oppose? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion for F? I move that the governing board, well, sorry, my thing went off. I move that the governing board approve the recommended changes to board policy IGD. Second. Dr. Galligan. It's the same. It's the President. Same. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All those that oppose? Do I have a motion for item G? I move that the governing board approve the recommended changes to board policy IJJ textbook supplemental material selection and adoption. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those that oppose? Okay. Moving, moving on to consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move that the governing board approve consent agenda items A through H. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All that opposed? Moving on to action, approve, agenda, pre-approval, and this goes to uh, Meglarena. Oh, can I have a motion for this? I move that the governing board accept administration's recommendation to pre-approve the agenda as presented. Second. Mr. Meglarena. Uh, President Paperman, uh, members of the board, Dr. Finch, uh, this is a standing item on our agenda uh, for pre-approval of addenda. Um, it is uh, kind of a lengthy list, uh, being nine pages long this time, as we are getting ready for uh, the start of the school year, um, and and uh, consequently, you'll see a lot more addenda at this time of year than you will um, any other time of the year. We typically ask the schools to try and um, segment their addenda uh, for the fall semester and the spring semester. So you'll see another high volume of, of these addenda uh, as we approach December uh, in anticipation of the second semester. And I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. All that opposed? I want to explain my vote. Um, looking at this, uh, addenda. Once again, this addenda is uh, has student act, student funds on it, which this obligates our students to raise funds for these expenses. Um, and I am opposed to forcing our students to pay for future addenda. So I vote nay. Next item B. Can I have a motion for item B? I move that the governing board approve administration's recommendation for employee 2023-2024 fiscal and employment year reclassifications. Second. Mrs. Moffitt. Good evening, President Paperman, governing board members. This is um, a standard point in time in the year when we bring these reclassifications forward to you. Um, there can be other points in time in the year when we do this as well, where it might be um, a, a single person or a group of three that qualify under the apprentice program or a program like that. But it is typical in the month of July that we bring these forward to you. And um, they've been provided to you along in uh, a few of the Friday updates. But I can entertain any questions for you tonight as well. Any questions? 
This doesn't look like an all-inclusive list. Um, is it? I know we saw a much more extensive list of administrative positions being added at the office. You know, the, the uh, org chart has grown significantly over the last few years um, at the district office. Uh, so President the Paperman, the same, same way? Ms. Fisher, I think if, if you're asking um, in comparison to the list that I've been providing you in the Friday update, in the, the list provided to you in the update also included the new positions added. And the differentiator there, the new positions added are added in the budget. And those were named for you in that update as well and allocated that direction. Those come through HR changes. Reclassifications require your approval specifically separately from a normal HR process and that's why the list is smaller than what you see in the so update. So to be clear, new positions don't come before the board. There's no consideration for the board. We're informed and they're put into the budget. As well so, as HR changes. So that's how they're approved mm -hmm. is through the budget. No discussion of whether they're needed, necessary, or um, a waste or a concern of, of public funds. In the, in the governing board setting, in the meeting no we do not do that well, um, in any here. setting is there any discussion yes with the board where is that discussion held I, I just want to make sure I didn't miss I, I think I answered that too quickly because then you followed up with with the board and so new position discussions um, as far as in this meeting would the opportunity for that conversation would be in discussion um, when we present the budget and oftentimes, too, Mr. Mr. Miglarino could correct me, we begin to present those new positions in the spring, and those are also considered as part of the NST process. Okay. So I do have a question because I have the same uh, concern with Mrs. Fisher with reclassification, especially when uh, we are as a district, uh, for example, that we need more counselors and social workers. So uh, uh, it will be, uh, I would say it will be transparent for the governing board to also be aware when they're reclassifying or adding more positions to the districts so, uh, so we can be aware and what is going to be added at the school level. Uh, one of the things I would like to request, uh, if we can get a list and within the district uh, office, like how many directors, how many superintendent, and so on. So that way the board can see what we have. So that way when reclassification comes up again, we have an idea what we're looking at uh, and also what's at the school level. Any other questions? I'll, I'll just add a little bit more to your work list there. So we can look at the org chart that you can give us and then the rationale and the process uh, that you go through uh, when you discover that there's a void somewhere, do we not need this job anymore, yet we need this job, uh, your check and balance, um, all of that. But I know that we can look at an org chart, but I think we want a little bit more detail to that. Because I'm pretty sure that when um, you guys look for uh, filling the voids and the needs for jobs that we just haven't been able to fill for years, and then the new needs that have come up with technology, so on and so forth, that you don't look to waste anyone's time or public funds. So I'd appreciate the process. Yeah, I, I would also like the full information of the process because other districts, they actually get approval from their boards for new positions. They actually discuss it with their boards. Um, and for too long, this district just keeps growing. Um, back in 2015, um, the superintendent at the time you know, really flattened the organization. Um, and uh, it has done nothing but grow significantly in administration since. Um, and I'm just, I would like to see that full process. Thank you. Okay, I just want to clarify that this item that we're not, uh, for the uh, public to know that we're not reclassifying positions, uh, that uh, we're just voting for those uh, for those two things that uh, that you're reclassifying, but not with positions, right? No, those reclassifications that are on the board. For Can you explain, Ms. Sure. Muffin? 
Um, I believe there are eight employees listed here. Okay. And just to be as brief as possible, we do go through a process that begins during the month of October where needs um, are presented by departments, by campuses, and so forth. And the, the list can be quite extensive. That is vetted. Um, people provide their rationales, and it uh, is reviewed and reviewed as the months go by. And we narrow it down to what we feel uh, we can af afford based on the budget moving forward and um, what is most needed in the organization. And that's these, this list here is what's been approved. Um, as bringing to the governing board for the 23-24 year. So it is eight employees that mm -hmm. we are asking that the board consider move from the position that's listed on that list, and that's what they currently hold, and we're asking that you approve that they move to the position listed on the next column. And it would be um, uh, a reclassification is, is reclassing to an advancement. Okay. advanced in pay anyway and complexity of uh, work that they're going to need to do. Okay, all those in favor say aye, all those that oppose say nay. Aye. Nay. Okay, we're going to move on to item C. <clears throat> um, if if uh, Mr. Carver and uh, the other three board members, or another two board members, made the decision, so I'll let him make the motion wow. for whatever he is, whatever they have decided. Wow. I move that the governing Excuse board me, approve the second, recommended. Paul. We make a decision when we vote, can so we, however you vote, motion, you vote, you vote. Go ahead, Paul. I move that the governing board approve the recommended SY24 superintendent goals. Second. Dr. Finch, is there anything that you need to say for these goals? No, just thank you um, for your feedback on the process. Um, it goes on for months. It comes uh, in alignment with our strategic plan, and actually every employee is aligned to the superintendent goals in the whole system, all 4,000 employees. And thanks again for your input. And um, we, uh, when our, we just met for an hour on them and made them tougher. So uh, we're going to have to buckle down and work twice as hard. But looking forward to the challenge. Thank you. Okay, uh, this, we, are, we are at the end of the year. Uh, I understand where Mrs. Fisher is coming from. Uh, we don't have enough time. Uh, I, I wish that we would have reviewed this earlier during the time. Uh, but the superintendents, you know, we need to have his goals for next year. So those, uh, who, uh, those who are in favor? Hi, and I'm going to explain my vote. I appreciate the hours and hours of work going through the multiple layers and scaffolding of uh, information and data. I also uh, appreciate two, board, two new board members taking the time to read for the last few months um, what goes into goals and what is at stake. So um, on that note, I do vote I with full confidence that we are following our strategic plan and will continue in the right direction for the students of our district and the employees and all the rest of the stakeholders, which is why we are where we are now. And those that oppose? I would also like to explain my vote. Um, not all board members have been consulted at all. Um, and it's been made clear that uh, some board members don't care if all board members are, con are consulted so long as the three votes are available. Um, and for that reason, I'm voting no, because these uh, goals aren't going to change anything. They're going to keep us on the same stagnant trail um, that we're on. And if we don't change something, if we don't have accountability, um, we're going to have another year and a half of the same that we've had for the last two. And, uh, and I'm sad for the kids that things aren't going to improve for them. Uh, at least not from this area. Thank you. I vote no. Moving to discussion number seven. Uh, this one is uh, for agenda, board superintendent reports. Uh, Mrs. Fisher, I know you requested this. Mm -hmm. If you want to discuss this. Uh, well, at the last couple of board meetings, the superintendent in his report has brought up items that maybe had, you know, we had questions about or what have you. Um, the only time the superintendent 
um, will speak with me at all in any way is um, here. Um, and so I would prefer that his, his uh, report go first so that if we have questions on something that he brings up or states, we can ask them. Um, if something that we don't we don't believe is, is what uh, we were told, we can engage and share with that as well. Um, but so I would just like to change that on the agenda. In general, it has always been the board president's responsibility to adjust this. Our policy is written that way. However, um, at this time, uh, it's not being done that way. So we're. I, we, we brought it forward as a vote for whomever would like to either do it or not do it. Any uh, statements or questions, board members, for this item? Are, are, are we able to vote on this tonight as it's come up as a discussion item? We'll, we'll come back at, at the next meeting as an action item, correct? It's just direction. We don't actually need to vote on it. The board president has the authority by policy to make that change. She just wants our opinion. Well, I requested for all board members to share their opinion. I know Mrs. Fisher wants to change this, but I want to make sure that we're all uh, that we're all collaborating with this item. If if so, my two cents. If that's what you're asking, then President Paperman is uh, if this small change in some way helps to build uh, better transparency and relations with the community and amongst the board, then it's a small, it's a small change to make to try to move forward. Um, that's my two cents on it. I would agree with that, but I would also agree then that we um, do rotating board reports for the governing board members as opposed to always having to be first and never being able to answer anything or always being last and always being able to do that. So I think that if we're really looking uh, for some mending and team building, that we would have the superintendent first and then we do uh, a rotating of board members uh, giving their reports. I agree with that as well. Okay, so I have to agree with Mrs. Fisher I've been on the board almost uh, four years and there's statements that the superintendent has stated last. I wish I could have uh, said something before, but because the board members go first, then uh, uh, you know, I don't get to ask or clarify any statements that the superintendent states. So then we're going to be uh, changing the superintendent to get the reports first, and then the board last. And uh, you know, it Though we have not done the rotating in the last three years, if that's what Ms. Ordway would like to do, there's not a reason we shouldn't, but it should still have some stable structure. That's all I ask. Okay, so. President Paperman. Yes. So for whatever it's worth, just establish a rotation and have it printed on the agenda. Whether you start off alphabetically the first week and then just bump the next person down and just go like that so that everybody knows what it's going to be and everybody knows what it has been and nobody feels like they've been passed over. Okay, so uh, Sheila, will you be able to keep track of that? Who's going to go first, second, third, and fourth since this is what uh, Mrs. Orway's asking for? An agenda for? review. An agenda review? Yeah, okay, so that way we keep track. Review. Okay, sure. Okay, so do we start the superintendent? <coughs> okay, reports. It's already on the agenda, how it is. Oh, next week. Okay, so uh, Paul, reports. <laughs> Sorry, you caught me off guard there. Um, well, summer's quickly coming to an end, and uh, we're all about ready to be really busy. Um, again, I just want to uh, extend my thanks to everybody in this room and everybody that might be listening, whether just members of the community or folks that are actually staffing our to help educate our children. Um, I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I know the community is really appreciative of everything you do. I just want a uh, quick call out to the Arizona Rattlers. Uh, for those of you that may remember, uh, Mrs. Simichek and I put together a shoe drive towards the end of last school year, and we were able to raise over 250 usable pairs of shoes 
uh, that were distributed to our Title I schools. The Arizona Rattlers like that idea, and so for the entire season, they've been acquiring shoes uh, for the specific purpose of donating them to the Deer Valley School District at the end of their season. Their last home game will be this Saturday, and so the entire shoe drive is going to culminate this Saturday. If, if anybody listening or in this room has never been to an Arizona Rattlers game, and it's an amazing thing to see, it's like a cross between football and WWF. Uh, it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful entertainment uh, dollar and uh, they've done a great job uh, getting shoes together for us and by the way the Rattlers have another winning season and we continue to expect great things out of them so a shout out to our to our Arizona Rattlers and uh, all the work they're doing to help support the community thank you Stephanie. Last Thursday was the last day of ESI at Vista Peak, so I just wanted to take an, I know I've, I've done this each week, but it's a real special program, and this summer particularly, personally, it affected me. Um, I just really want to say thank you to the teachers and staff once again for all your hard work over the last five weeks because I just watched so many students with the biggest smiles walk away and even some tears because they didn't want to leave. So um, I think that speaks volumes about our DVS DVUSD community of teachers and staff. So thank you again. Um, I did want to just briefly touch on the action item, um, see the superintendent goals. Um, I do want our community to be aware that these goals can be viewed by So if you're interested and you're hearing us kind of talk back and forth about them, you are able to look at those goals and, and read through them. And, and we always would welcome your feedback. Um, send an email to the board about what you think um, for the following year. So um, I just want to put that out there. I, I want to say that um, there are some side conversations going on up here, unfortunately, going on about how the goals will keep us stagnant um, and not moving forward. But I believe that is absolutely not true. Um, I have watched our community, our DVS, DVUSD community, uh, both as a parent, as a board member, as a prior teacher of the district, continually to improve um, and achieve um, and work well for our strategic plan. So I, um, I, I do want to know, as far as people taking the time to, to explain their votes, um, I just wanted to point that out because I didn't explain my vote. I didn't really feel like I needed to, but after the side conversations that I've been hearing this evening, I did want to take the time to say that. And again, this is available for you to review and you have a voice. So when you are looking at those goals and then you receive the um, uh, sur uh, surveys, uh, as a teacher, you, you receive teacher surveys, parents re receive parent surveys, uh, students receive stu student su surveys, sorry. Um, you can answer those questions. And so you have a voice in that as well. So you help drive um, our superintendent's goals um, to be achieved um, based off of what you think is going on in the district. So I just wanted to kind of bring that to everybody's attention. And the next time we meet, we will be in school, full session. So uh, welcome back teachers, welcome back staff. I know you still have another week. So I'm not trying to push it, but... We're happy that you're back. We're happy that you're here, and thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Mrs. Orway. I did have the opportunity to uh, go to Barry Goldwater High School this, this week. Um, we have a giving closet and the Calling All Fairy Godmothers, and there was many, many employees from Toll Brothers and I think Younger Brothers and not an exhaustive list. You'll get that list when it's exhaustively done. Um, they have transformed that area to a place where children that don't have anything can be very proud to go and pick things out. And I was happy to be included with an area for uh, the clothing for the prom uh, and or uh, interviews that they might have or, or different things. But for me, it's been about a 14-year journey from a little space in the outlets at Anthem to a spot in Boulder Creek to my garage, which 800 dresses in my garage really didn't uh, agree that much, uh, to the weight room closet in Goldwater, up to the cage, 
uh, where, where it was industrial chic, and now it is unbelievable. So I do believe that when kids see things that are uh, new and valuable, that that is how they will feel when they go in. So uh, I'm just floored by the amount of um, generosity of time, spirit, and insight. I think the kids absolutely inspire us to raise our own expectations of what we can do. And I'll throw one shout out to um, our SRO over there, so she drives more things than you can imagine. And that'll be that. Oh, rally, rally, rally. I wish we had a rally towel. Mrs. Fisher. Um, <laughs> yeah, you would think summer break would uh, be light work. Unfortunately for me, it has not been. Um, you know, I have a full-time job. Everybody knows that. I'm doing double duty at the office. However, I have been busy going behind someone who is changing my address, um, uh, taking out loans, opening accounts, um, terminating my insurance. That was fun. Um, my APS bill was sent to the Bronx, New York. Uh, my mortgage statement was sent to the Bronx, New York. Um, the U.S. Postal Service, the Attorney General, they've all been provided the information. Um, so I've been doing a lot of chasing. Um, <laughs> doing that's taken a bit of time. Um, so I would like to first thank Paul Carver for bringing forward uh, things that he has seen since the district uh, does communicate with him um, so that we didn't make a mistake in the hiring of, of individuals. I would also like to thank Ms. Ordway for asking that a letter be provided to the board in the Friday update. Without that having been provided, we would not have known that executive session had been violated. Um, we would not have known all the information uh, that was provided to the public. Um, and one would think that I would be upset by the misinformation of members of the cabinet um, had put out, but I've been dealing with this uh, really for years. I did not believe, I didn't believe that, I always assumed that when um, members of the district office saw the things that were going on, they, they remained quiet because, you know, the, their boss is the one who has done horrendous things and bullied individuals. Um, but I guess I know I was wrong. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of sorry for that. Um, I, <laughs> ironically, the letter that was put out talked all about bullying and, and, and it ironically talked about how I was the bully of the district. The funny thing for me is that when I hear that, I am asked, I ask, can you provide one teacher that I have bullied? One. And you know, the only one anyone can come up with is Ms. Wardway's friend, Aunt Aota, because I said his opinion was BS. That was it. The only teacher. However, um, the, the saying keeps going that I, I bully this, I bully that. It, it's ironic. This is one volume of emails, of documents, of statements. Where, where horrendous things are said. No other board member has ever experienced um, the name calling that of, of oh, she can talk like that all the time, or um, what is your word? Oh, drivel. When, when she speaks, it's drivel. Um, I just have to say I, I am saddened that this individual was so extremely misinformed that another district in this state was defamed. And I want to be very clear that the only information that was provided was from the Auditor General. 
And I, I don't know about anyone else, but I don't think he particularly or she office tends to lie. So it's been interesting. Um, I thought a lot about it since that Thursday update came out, and I saw that. And then I thought about, okay, well, who have I bullied? And, and I guess the only one I really have to apologize to is Miss Moffitt. She's the only one that I can honestly say um, may have grounds. When uh, her position was open, I said I wanted somebody who had education or experience in human resources, a PHR, an SPHR, something. And I will give her kudos. Uh, first, uh, I would like to say that uh, moving forward, uh, we still have, what, like a year and a half for the next election, uh, that we as a board uh, need to uh, to start putting trans more transparency in place and, you know, having that respect with each other. Uh, because at the end, we're here for our students. Uh, we, we were elected. Uh, to make sure that, you know, our students are going to meet educational goals. Uh, we were elected to listen to, to the voices of the community, uh, regardless, you know, if we like each other or not. Uh, we need to try our very best for our students' sake that our main focus is going to be on the kids. And, of course, you know, we do have, you know, district visions and mission goals that within the schools, they put them into practice too. So, so I just hope that the governing board may find other ways, how can we build that relationship? Maybe Dr. Finch can have uh, maybe uh, some meetings together, fun activities or something, you know, to, uh, because you know, we still have a year and a half and, and we gotta look at what's most important right now, you know, it's our kids. You know, the education system is getting challenging and when governing boards are, are not putting the main focus on students, then, then we lose what, what is more important. So, so this is what I would like to say to our staff uh, and to our governing board. I also would like to say uh, thank you for those staff and teachers. I know that you're gonna be returning to to school and I hope that that everyone had a good summer break uh, and spending time with their family. And I know as a school board, I'm very excited to get the staff back and our students back and go back to our normal routines and our boards uh, visiting, if they have time visiting the schools or visiting uh, events and, and other things that that the district does. Thank you. Not yet, one more. Um, no, I just um, again remind uh, board members, um, no executive session was broken. Um, my staff is way too smart for that. And uh, so we'll continue to work like we always do with high integrity, high character, and uh, the staff is a reflection of me and what I believe in as well, and appreciate their work. They are uh, the 
some of the finest in all of Arizona. And uh, it comes and it's displayed in our awards that we continue to do uh, and win. And our academics are on par with our greater than all of our neighbors, as usual. Um, we used to have Tangle with Chandler. Now it's uh, Scottsdale that's given us a run. So um, I think a lot of it has to do with continuity of leadership is why we've been successful. And uh, same with Scottsdale. We uh, just uh, let everyone know we are in the middle of uh, preparation for the uh, school year. So all of our trainings have begun. We are training throughout the district. Uh, we have three days with uh, student support services, uh, new staff there, new admin training uh, was over uh, today uh, in the Innovation Center. We had a transportation job fair today. Um, lots of uh, campus and uh, department uh, trainings that are going on. I think um, Ms. Sheila's gonna have 100 secretaries in here soon. Tomorrow? Soon. Thursday. It's coming soon. Um, over 100 will be in here. So uh, that's the, it's, the summer was short and <laughs> training is already fired up for next year. So pretty exciting. Uh, as Ms. Ordway mentioned, the rally is the next big event that's coming. Uh, well, 4,000 employees will be at GCU uh, at the end of the month. Looking forward to getting the family together and getting fired up for the first day of school, which is July 31st. Our next board meeting will be in August 8th, so it'll be a bit till we um, get together again. But uh, thanks again for working together as we strive to be the best school district in all of Arizona. And uh, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Uh, future meetings are posted and dated. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All those in favor? Second. Aye. Aye. Aye.